Welcome to the beautiful Johns Creek Environmental Campus, or JCEC, which includes the Dr. Robert E. Bob Fulton Environmental Education Center. Today, let's see the journey that our water takes and how it gets treated for our use every day. Let's think about just today, when we woke up, brushed our teeth, washed our face. Where does that water come from? Let's see what happens to our water before and after we use it. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, over 68% of the fresh water on Earth is found in ice caps and glaciers, and just over 30% is found in groundwater. Only about 3% of our fresh water is found in the surface water of our lakes, rivers, and streams, and most of that 3% is inaccessible. So for this metro area, our water is pulled from the beautiful Chattahoochee River. The Chattahoochee River starts in the North Georgia mountains, borders Alabama, and lets out into the Florida Panhandle. And all along the way, communities are pulling water, treating it for use, and putting it right back into the river for future downstream users. So since the Chattahoochee River is the source for this area, we pull millions of gallons of water from the river every day and treat it at a drinking water treatment facility to get it all cleaned. After it is treated, it is sent through pipes underground to our homes and businesses for our use. After we use the water, it becomes known as wastewater and is sent through different pipes underground to a wastewater treatment facility to be treated again. Once it is treated, and all clean, it is then put back into the river for future users of the Chattahoochee. All of these steps are known as the water treatment cycle. Here at the Johns Creek Environmental Campus, we treat the wastewater. We are a state-of-the-art treatment facility that treats wastewater from approximately 71,000 residents and business users within the Johns Creek Basin area. The basin area includes a part of the cities of Roswell, Alpharetta, and Johns Creek, Georgia. The Education Center Wing allows for the wastewater treatment process to be used as an educational tool. We have had over 50,000 visitors to go through our award-winning program. And this area includes a lecture room, a classroom, and a teaching lab. There are some very unique features here at JCEC, which include the membrane bioreactor technology, which was the largest used in the United States for the treatment of wastewater when this facility came online in 2009. Odor and noise control systems, which allow the campus to be a good neighbor to nearby residents. The facility's five acre design allowed for over 35 acres of land to be used as a series of walking trails, a pond, a stream system with a covered bridge, as well as specially designed stormwater bioretention facilities that help clean any stormwater runoff. JCEC provides reusable quality water, which can be used for irrigation, restrooms, and for fire protection. There is also a high level of backup for all the treatment processes, which includes standby diesel generators that allow power generation sufficient to run the entire facility in the event of a power failure. All these features are used as educational tools, and JCEC continually wins awards for design, performance, and educational programs. So now that you know a little bit about this campus, Let's see what's in the incoming wastewater or used water when it comes here to get treated. It includes things like trash, plastic, bits of wood, and cigarette butts. 
It also contains pathogens from human waste, which includes bacteria and viruses. The nutrients in the waste include phosphorus, nitrogen, and ammonia associated with human, industrial, and food waste. Non-living solids that are not able to be treated biologically. The turbidity or look of the water is cloudy. Fine debris includes things like pieces of hair, plastic, wood, or cloth. Grit is primarily small particles of heavy sand, gravel, and rocks. It also contains a low or dissolved oxygen level. Scum also comes in, which includes fats, oil, and grease that are dumped in sinks. So since the treatment process here is all underground, let's go through each process area and see the journey our water takes to get treated. Wastewater first comes in by gravity in pipelines that are about 60 feet underground into the influent pumping station. There are five chopper pumps that cut up large materials, then that flow enters through core screens, which are bands of rotating plates with small six millimeter openings that drain out materials and allow the water to continue on. It's like a strainer catching larger materials. The collected material called screenings are pumped to wash packers then washed for removal. Then the flow goes through grit removal chambers to remove grit, gravel, and sand. A vortex current in the center forces the heavier grit and sand to fall out while water and other solids continue on. It's like a whirlwind that forces the grit to the center and out. The collected grit is then pumped to a system to separate the grit from the water. The grit is then placed in the same dumpsters as the screening remains. The flow then goes through primary clarifiers, which are settling basins that separate heavy non-living solids. The solids that settle are scraped to one end by boards called flights and pulled by chains. It's like heavy things settling to the bottom. The solids are then also put into digesters. There is also a layer of scum, which is fats, oils, and grease on the top, which is pushed to one end with water spray nozzles and then also put in digesters. Digesters reduce the amount of solids using bacteria. Then they are dewatered and disposed of. Then the flow goes through another screen or fine screen with smaller openings of only two millimeters to catch fine debris like hair, wood, or cloth. It's like a smaller strainer. Then the flow enters into a very important part of the process, the biological process. This process uses microorganisms, bacteria, or good bugs to help us clean the water. These microorganisms convert the biodegradable organic living matter into simple substances and additional biomass. It's like bugs having a party to help us clean our water. Something similar might be how our bodies use the good bacteria to help us break down and digest our food. Wastewater has a lot of phosphorus and nitrogen that needs to be removed. Both are essential to living matter, but too much could cause algae blooms and use up the oxygen that the fish and aquatic life need in the river. In biological basins, phosphorus accumulating organisms or PAOs develop and cause the release of phosphorus in a form that it can be consumed by organisms in the downstream air-infused basins. Chemically, Ferric chloride can be added, and phosphorus is precipitated out and removed in the sludge. It's like phosphorus going through a transformation process and then removed. The biological treatment process utilizes a concept of activated sludge, bacteria, or microorganisms. 
This process develops colonies of microorganisms within the basins that eat up nutrients. Aerobic or high oxygen conditions are created by bubbling air to create a nitrosomonas bacteria. Then a process called nitrification, where incoming ammonia turns into nitrite, then nitrate, and then nitrogen gas. That gas leaves through an odor control system. Then the activated sludge or microorganisms are recycled back to basins to keep consuming nitrogen. It's like nitrogen going through a transformation process by the bacteria and then also removed. The next step is the membrane bioreactor system or MBR, which uses reinforced hollow fiber ultrafiltration level membranes that look like hollow spaghetti. The flow enters into a bioreactor tank and is pumped through the sides of the membranes and the microscopic 0.04 micron pore size serves as a barrier that traps solids, including microorganisms and pathogens, allowing only clean water to pass. This clean water is called permeate. Solids that were caught remain in the basin and then are recycled back to either the biological basins as activated sludge or to the aerobic digesters as waste activated sludge. It's like thousands of straws with very small openings and tiny holes along the sides having water sucked through them, pulling only the clean water through. The treated water then enters into the final treatment step, ultraviolet or UV disinfection. UV disinfection is a good way to inactivate or destroy bacteria and viruses. Although nearly all of the pathogens and microorganisms have been filtered out by the membranes, the UV provides a redundant or backup treatment barrier. The UV disinfection looks like the lightsaber's light in the Star Wars movie. It's so strong that when water flows under it, any bad bacteria it is destroyed. It kills the genetic structure of the bad bacteria. Since the water came in with a low oxygen level, we must post air rate or add oxygen to the flow. Water flows over a series of walls creating a waterfall effect, which raises the oxygen levels. We can also add a grid of bubbled air into the process if needed. This allows oxygen-rich water to be sent back to the river. Once the water has been treated to levels required by the Georgia Environmental Protection Division, the treated water is ready for return to our Chattahoochee River via an outfall and diffuser. The discharge design allows for boats and other river users to pass over the diffusers without even knowing they are there. Fulton County takes pride in noting that the water being returned is even cleaner than the water already there. So the next time you turn on your faucet to use your water, Think about the journey your water goes through to get all cleaned and sent to us and see what you can do to conserve water. It's important that we take care of our water resources like our rivers, lakes, and streams. And let's all become good environmental stewards. Our water is our future.